Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we take a look at the updates found within the remaster of Bendy Chapter 1. The aim of this video is to compare all changes made in this update since it was changed last year with the launch of Chapter 3. With the release of Chapter 4, Bendy Chapter 1 has undergone its most dramatic alterations to date. Some are obvious, others not so much. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in to an in-depth analysis of all that is new in the remaster of Bendy Chapter 1. But before we jump into this video, remember to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified every time a new video drops. I'm going to take you through this update room by room, so we can compare everything without missing anything. So let's begin right at the start, as Henry enters Joey Drew Studios for the first time in 30 years. Alright Joey, I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. The most obvious change is the new lighting system. Everything is more vibrant and has more pop. Looking to the far background, the workshop instantly has more depth to it, as the back wall and far objects also now have light sources. Notice the ceiling, which no longer mimics the wooden texture found on the floor, but instead has straight planks laid across it and a new colour scheme. These may seem like small additions, but they transform how the entire stage is presented. These new textures extend across the ceiling for all new chapters and now give the world of Bendy a more distinct and polished feel. Another small detail that jumps out is the dripping ink from the ceiling. Before it lightly dribbled down, but now drops in thick globules far faster. It really feels like this old studio is falling apart. As we move into the workshop, our first big change becomes apparent. The clunky film reels spinning on the wall are now replaced by larger, more eye-pleasing ones, which sport the signage Joey Drew Studios. It really looks like a proper entrance hall to an animation studio now. We also see new objects such as this box and plank of wood propped up against the right-hand wall. Turning to our left and we see the door next to the corridor leading to Henry's desk has now had a major redesign. In fact, these seemingly more important doors have all had the same revamp. The same look is now also found on the exit to the studio itself. Heading now then to Henry's old workstation and we see another aesthetic change for this remaster. All the desks are now reworked. As you can see they have a slightly different appearance and this goes for all desks found around the studios. Also notice that now Henry's desk is the only one featuring the rejected Bendy cartoon design, adding further evidence to the theory that Henry was in fact Bendy's original creator, but his design was then altered by Joey Drew. Next, as we turn to the boarded up room behind Henry's desk, we notice that, well, it's no longer boarded up at all. It now opens up into an entirely new room. Gone is the mysterious staircase leading up into the light, replaced by another animation room, full of artist desks, including a big workstation at the far end that hides a special secret. We also hear Henry comment with a brand new line of dialogue upon entering. Looks like they knocked out a wall or two after I left. Guess it took a few people to replace me. Also notice that these desks contain new panels of animation taken directly from the cartoon Tombstone Picnic that featured in the Bendy Chapter 3 reveal trailer last year. There's even a toilet, although it's boarded up. There's nothing much to say about this toilet, so let's return to the main entrance hall. When taking the right-hand path on our way to the ink machine, notice the new sign featuring directions around the studio. These first appeared in Chapter 4, and now have been included in previous chapters to give the game a cohesive feel. It also helps us navigate without getting lost. 
Another small change can be seen with the graffiti on the wall, reading Dreams Come True. The line is still the same here, but the font is slightly different and much larger. It looks more like it's been painted on than before. And once again, this change can be seen with all graffiti found throughout these remastered chapters. Okay, time for one of the biggest changes found within this latest remaster. The ink machine room has gone. Well, at least it's gone from where it used to be. Also, the corridor to the left, once open to us from the beginning, is now shuttered. We must now activate the ink machine before going any deeper into the workshop. Again, notice there are more light sources everywhere, giving the game a brighter and more atmospheric feel throughout. As we reach the end of a corridor where the ink machine would previously have appeared, we see that there is a sign detailing the crazy amount of ink this colossal machine seems to burn through in a week. A whopping 423 gallons. This has been signed off by Thomas Connor, one of the studio's handymen and possible Boris clone. Following the corridor to the right and hopping over this pipe takes us into an entirely new room. And it is here that we now encounter the ink machine. There is also new gameplay here too. I'll let the scene play out and you can hear Henry's new dialogue and experience this new sequence unfolding in real time. This lift could use a few dry cells. Let's see what you're hiding down there, old friend. Now let's compare this with the original scene. So this is the ink machine, huh? Wonder how you turn it on. You can see there are many changes. The ink machine has a big redesign and now looks far more detailed. It is also now attached to a pulley system and in each new chapter of the game can be caught being lowered deeper into the depths of the studio. The room it appears in is far grander, as is the introduction of the machine as it spews out thick plumes of steam. A chilling introduction to a mysterious device key to Henry's adventure. The only downside of this is we can no longer get up close and personal with the ink machine like we used to. Next, let's take a trip down to the break room. This room is now accessible as soon as you've raised up the ink machine. There aren't too many changes in this room. A set of curtains hang near the staircase and a pile of books adorn one of the tables. The mysterious hatch hidden behind the boarded up passage at the back of a room remains inaccessible. However, there is a cool little addition to be found here. On the right hand wall next to the storeroom is a darts board. This board can be interacted with and Henry can now enjoy a leisurely game of darts. While there doesn't seem to be any kind of leaderboards, it's a neat little feature nonetheless. With the shutter raised, let's head towards the Boris clone and ritual room area of the studio. Passing through the connecting hallway, notice how the planks here have been replaced by a banister. As we reach the ritual room, another massive update is apparent. This new room now looks completely different. The roof is raised with big ventilation shafts running along it. The back wall is now made up of machinery, similar to that found within Chapter 3. The floor has also changed. Part of it looks like the soil seen on the flooring of Chapter 4. These changes really give the room its own distinct look and feel. More pipes connect everything, including the pedestals themselves. An interesting point, as they are likely connected directly to the ink flow that starts up when powering on the ink machine itself, meaning the ink itself does indeed seem to be the catalyst for the ritual and reanimating workers connected by their specific objects. Talking of these objects, this is a fundamental gameplay change for the remaster of Chapter 1. 
before the six items needed to begin the ritual were found in randomly generated locations around the stage. Now they are always found in the same places. The inkwell is located by the main desk in the art department. The record in the radio room. The wrench is tucked into the overalls of the Boris clone. The gear in the box within the ink machine room. The bendy toy on a chair within the theatre room. And Joey's book on the book table found in the break room. With that said, let's head to the Boris room and see what's new there. While the changes in this room are strictly cosmetic, they give off a far creepier and more horror focused vibe. The walls are now tiled, almost like an old hospital operating theatre. We see a sheet hung from the wall and more objects placed around such as this iron sheet and the pallet, chair and toolbox. Notice how the board Boris is strapped to has been updated too and there are even subtle differences apparent in Boris's model itself. Remember Boris originally looked like this. The fact we see a worker's toolbox beside Boris is further evidence that these Boris clones may indeed be the handymen of the studio, especially as it is always the wrench now found on the Boris clone. While this room was originally silent, it now has some creepy audio. Take a listen. Next, let's check out the Wally Franks recording. The actual audio is the same, however the recorder is now found on a table rather than a shelf, a toolbox and a coffee cup found beside it, and one of those charming work hard, work happy posters plastered above. Such a motivational place to work. The fact we now have a toolbox here right next to the Wally Franks recording as well as next to the Boris clone in addition to the evidence seen in chapter 3 really suggests Wally Franks and Thomas Connor are in fact now versions of Boris. You can find more on this in my theory videos on the subject but for now let's head on to the theatre room. When entering the theatre room after placing all the items on the pedestals, Henry is greeted by this bendy jump scare and then some music as the projector turns on and flashes up a dancing bendy. This music has changed in the remaster. Here is the original. And here is the rendition found in the remaster. You can see a few minor changes to the visuals in this room too. However, a big change is found at the back of a room when looking at the pressure system. Before it was simply a few pipes and a button. Now we can see a large mechanical mainframe complete with a valve to turn. Heading back to the main power room and powering up the ink machine is also slightly different. Here are both versions, notice the audio is now quite different. Also in the remaster, the room glows really brightly before things grow darker. As we head back to the ink machine, the mysterious footprints that once led from the break room to the machine room now lead the opposite way around. They also travel all the way down this new corridor and are far clearer to see. 
The bendy jump scare and escape sequence are now very different. Perhaps the biggest change outside of the machine itself. I'll play out both versions back to back and then we can take a detailed look at each and every change. One of the most obvious changes is seen with the inclusion of two mini cutscenes. The first, as Bendy reaches for Henry, he now falls back. This makes sense as before we could pretty much stand next to Bendy until he disappeared. And also let's take a second to reflect on how far we've come from this, to this, to this. Also notice how much more aggressive and destructive everything feels. The shutter is busted open as ink flows out, the ceiling tears apart and buckles as pipes full of ink smash through. The audio is super scary too in comparison. As we run for the exit, we see it is now partially open with light flooding in. Alas, Henry Falls, which we now see once again, has a shiny new cutscene. You may also have noticed that the music is now completely different. Bendy's theme has changed for the better. This entire sequence now feels more epic and tense. When Henry hits the floor after the drop, we now get a new super creepy piece of music too. Take a listen to this. The corridors leading downwards have a slightly different appearance too, as you can see here in this side-by-side -side comparison. Upon entering the axe room, we see two new updates that really jump out. The first is for graffiti reading. The creator lied to us, which now has been moved from the right-hand wall to the left. It now fills the entire wall, so it's pretty hard to miss. In its old place, a power box sits. Previously, these power boxes were only found in Chapter 3. You may remember the axe used to be found on the wall. Not anymore. It is now sat atop a brand new workstation. The axe itself now has a brand new animation and feels much more responsive and precise to use. Finally, let's head into the pentagram room and take a look at the last change to be found in this Chapter 1 remaster. The flashback now features two new images. Take a look and you'll see it now happens much faster, but also has changed the look of both the ink machine and Bendy in line with their new models. And that's it for today's video guys, I hope you did enjoy it. This has probably been quite a long video as there were a lot of changes to go over and a lot of ground to cover here. I will be doing next guys a full video covering all the changes in chapters 2 and 3, so look out for that relatively soon. I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, share it with your friends if you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.